everybody, Jacob here. Welcome back to the Fashion Bunker. Today is Channel Talk time, so, you know, get ready to sit down, chillax, relax, and enjoy the the reading of the comments with me. It's like a living room situation. So let's get right to it. Uh, for the occasion, I'm going to spray a little bit of Chanel Number no. 5 Pure Parfum just to, like, create the mood. Oh. Hmm. Okay, now that we're drugged up <laughs> with Chanel for the occasion. Oof. Wow, the Pure Parfum, it's just... It focuses you, you know? All right. Let's begin with November Breed. How are you doing, November Breed? On my uh, Chanel Les Exclusives Eau de Toilette or Eau de Parfum What is Better video. Uh, I'm one of those people who discovered Les Exclusives thanks to you, and I'm so grateful for that. I bought Misia for myself, but my mom fell in love with it so deeply that I gave it to her. And I won't use any more just so she can enjoy it to the last drop. This happened one month before they switched from Eau de Toilette to Eau de Parfum. So knowing that that fragrance is going extinct disappoints me immensely. You are right. If they want to raise the price, then raise it. But don't add insult to injury by lowering the quality of the product. I totally agree with you. And actually, guys, you know, thank you so much. A lot of you have been writing me after I posted my um, video, uh, you know, Chanel, Chanel Les Exclusives or the Toilette Eau de Parfum, what is better? And I urged all of you to to write to Chanel and to let them know that you want your toilets back. And we should just, the only way to have a chance, is, you know, a remote possibility of a chance to, to get the auto toilets back is to, to not purchase the auto parfums because money talks in this economy. That's the only way to get it through to them. Of course, write them emails and letters. A lot of you have been writing me uh, that you have been writing them uh, as well. So even though you get like generic responses from Chanel, don't worry about it. That's like a typical thing that they do. It's the quantity of letters that is important, nevertheless, no matter how generic the answer is that they send you back. And uh, yes. Um, hi D, how you doing, sweetie? D writes on my how to pronounce Gianni Versace the right way in Italian. Thank you, teacher. I have my new mantra as I go through my day today. Oh, that's so sweet. Thanks, D. Because you guys, you know, I have this like uh, mini videos of like a minute or a minute and a half that I post every day. It's gonna be a relatively long series. It's gonna go for about a month and a half or two months. Uh, every day, another Italian designer where I teach you how to pronounce the correct Italian way or the correct Italian way of pronouncing the brand's name or the designer's name. And it is a sort of a mantra. It's like every day, every 24 hours, like a clockwork, one video comes out. So there you go, Dee. Hope you're enjoying it. Today, uh, well, today, the, the day you posted the comment was on Gianni Versace. Um, then... There is an interesting one I wanted to read to you guys. Um, oh. Kevin McCoy. How you doing, sweetie? Uh, Kevin writes also on, my, no, on the Chanel Sycamore secret ingredient video. Uh, I just had to correct the type of tree that Judas supposedly hanged himself uh, from. It was a red bud tree, not a sycamore. I once bought seeds of the Judas tree, and it was a redbud tree. As an atheist, I don't care about the Bible, but I had to say. Remember that I bought a sample of sycamore and hated it, but I didn't know not to get the eau de parfum. I don't remember if it was an eau de parfum or an eau de toilette, so that might have been why. Kevin, I think uh, with sycamore, it's either love or hate. Uh, if you hated the eau de parfum, you're probably also not going to like uh, I mean, you're not going to hate Yodo Toilette, but you're not going to like it either, probably. Um, it's a, It has a lot of character. There is no gray zones with Sycamore. You either love it or you hate it. Uh, as far as Judas is concerned, my dear. Now, I, I already answered you uh, in the comment section, but just to clarify, guys, you know, there's... We cannot know anything about the history, really, of the Bible and all of these people. We can either rely on books or stories, and a lot of different books have been written. And a lot of different... Um, texts testify in a different way about a death of certain biblical figures. Um, you know, there are, as I answered in my, in my answer, there's a, you know, a redbud tree version. There's a sycamore, a ficus sycomorus. It's like a fig sycamore tree from which he, he hung himself. 
or the the one that Kevin mentions is also um, an option. And then there's a third one as well, the elder tree. Elder tree, which is kind of associated to a sycamore tree, but it could be of a different type as well. But then there's another version altogether that he didn't hang himself off a sycamore tree, but that he was like punished by divine um, punishment and kind of blew up. Like he just started like blowing up and exploded and kind of split in half. There's another version uh, similar, similar that he kind of like, fell off a cliff or jumped off a cliff. There's suicidal versions and there's homicidal versions. Um, so, Kevin, don't be too quick to believe everything you read on Judas and don't be too quick to correct other people's versions of uh, the death of this, this figure, which could have or could have not existed. I mean, you know, it's all about belief. And this brings me to this point of belief. Coco Chanel herself altered and changed her history. She did not like to say that she, you know, was raised in an orphanage, uh, motherless, and that her father abandoned her. She would say that her father was rich and was in America traveling and getting more money and coming to visit her all over, you know, from time to time. Um, so it's, she would reinvent so much of her history and she decided to believe parts that made her feel more safe and more comfortable. So don't rain on the parade, I say. If we have a version of the story, and you can just go to Wikipedia, even in Wikipedia it's listed as an option that Sycamore was the tree he hung himself from. Um, we should not be anal about these biblical happenings and stories. We have to be very flexible about them because they have to relate to spirituality and to what you believe. I choose to believe the version of the story of the sycamore tree because it adds more mythology and mystery to the actual sycamore fragrance. You see where I'm getting at here. Um, and I also love everything associated to this sycamore tree. You know, if you Google the images of a sycamore tree, the actual big tree, they, they are hundreds and thousands of years old, some of them, and they get really big and they, they survive in horrid climates. And there's a lot of pictures like also in Africa where you, you we have like landscapes of nothing, desolation. And in the middle of this desolation, an enormous sycamore tree. It's like a cancer sucking up all the life from the surrounding area. It's a frightening vision. It's oniric, you know, it's a nightmarish vision. Some sycamore trees are have so many contorted branches. They look like cramped branches, you know. And a lot of people in Egypt, in ancient Egypt, you know, uh, sarcophaguses, were made out of sycamore trees. So it's a tree that's related to death. And a lot of times today, a lot of people, without even knowing the real reasons, are kind of afraid of a sycamore tree because sycamore is associated to death. I don't see it that way. To me, sycamore is associated to truth and freeing oneself. You know, the, the extremely poetic vision of a sycamore tree is also usually uh, mentioned in, in poetry as also in underneath the sycamore trees the song which we have in twin peaks i always i never stress enough to mention it but it's a kind of an it's relatable to poetry where two lovers if they do um give them give each other an appointment to meet in secret underneath a sycamore tree poetically speaking they will never meet they will um lose themselves and they will not find a way so don't give your lover an appointment underneath the branches of a sycamore tree because chances are you might not meet that person again. And that is, of course, a symbology of splitting yourself in half. It's like a mirror vision of yourself. Hence, we have this kind of underneath the sycamore tree, which is kind of the mirror image, the crop on the top, and what's underneath the ground, the roots, which kind of have the same shape as the crop, but underneath the, the ground. And this is uh, what... Uh, the sycamore uh, perfume from Chanel kind of that's where it goes to because it smells of the wet soil and the earthiness and the smokiness from underneath the ground um, and yet when you say sycamore you envision the top of the tree so you have that kind of mirrored image and the same happens to like a person that approaches a sycamore tree it's like seeing a mirror of oneself so you kind of cut you split in two and if you're not strong enough to handle that image of yourself you can get lost in a way meaning that you might kind of go insane. 
So sycamore has so many symbolic meanings that I find it extremely magical that of all the Chanel fragrances, that's the only one that bears such a mythological name. All of the other ones are connected to Chanel's life. You know, it's 1932 with the diamond collection. It's number 19. It's her birthday. 31 Rue Cambon is her ateliers in the first boutique. Well, not the first boutique, but the first house boutique she bought. Uh, number 18 is the address of the jewelry in um, in the Place Vendôme. And uh, 28 La Pause is the address of her, you know, holiday house. Belle Respiro is the other holiday house. Um, Cuit de Russie is Russian leather for a reason. Bois de Zille, you know. They, okay, Bois de Zille has a little bit of a mystery going on there. The forests of the islands. Uh, but still, it's very abstract. Sycamore is not abstract. Sycamore is a heavy, has a heavy meaning, has a, it, 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 it carries its own cross, you know, so very magical, very magical fragrance, and, and especially even more so because it already existed in the 30s, 40s, under the Chanel name, and then it was totally gone, disappeared, discontinued, nobody knew anything about it, and then Jacques Polge brought back the name, however, not the fragrance, because it doesn't smell like the 40s version did. Um... Castazable, Castazable, Castazable. How are you doing, sweetie? I butchered your name, so sorry. On uh, my Chanel is exclusive, Eau de Toilette Eau de Parfum, what is better? I have actually heard that Coromandel Eau de Parfum is much richer than the Eau de Toilette. Hmm, it's not. Um, you know, I was just talking to a Chanel essay the other day from a, a fragrance counter, uh, a person that I know very nice person. And I was saying, you know, because he was saying, oh, you know, well, you know, because people were complaining, well, the typical story they're going to tell you and sell you, you know, it's the customers that said that your know, toilets were too weak. And I told him, listen, how long have you been working for Chanel? He's like, yeah, over 11 years. And I'm like, well, you know, so you've smelled the first formulations, you know, from 2007 and eight of Sycamore, of um, Coromandel, of all of them. He's like, yes, I did. And I'm like, did they or did they, be honest now, did they or did they not smell more intense than your toilet versions post-reformulation era 2012? He's like, yes, they did. And I'm like, and now be honest, did the original eau de toilette formulations from the, two, from the late 2000s, did they smell or did they not smell more intense, long-lasting, and better quality than the de parfums of today from the Les Exclusives range? He's like, yes, they did. I dropped the mic. I rest my case. Now, out of desperation, a lot of y'alls out there really just want to smell them and there's just the de parfums and you go for it. Be my guest, go for it. But don't ask me to give you tips because I will not tell you to buy eau de parfum because it's a waste of money. It's too much money. The prices are hiked up too much. And haven't smelled, having smelled the originals, even the originals from the 2007 period, 8 and 9 and 10, uh, you know, it's, it's already, I mean, I've, I've come accustomed to liking the post-reformulation eau de toilettes, post-2012, and I still find them intense enough. However, they don't last as long as uh, their predecessors. But still, I prefer the post-2012 reformulations of the Eau de Toilette to the Eau de Parfums. I, I still find them way better composed. It's the composition that makes the difference. And I prefer them to the Eau de Parfums. It's, it's just a fact. My nose doesn't lie to me. Now, I also say, get the Pure Parfum of the seven that are available in Pure Parfum form. That is magical. Like, if you can afford that and... If you're not afraid of getting, you know, 15 milliliter bottles, they're like this small. But this lasts years and years and years. You're using drops of this, literally. Um, anyway, so, and then you say, I suppose that the thing with scent, it develops different on everyone's senses and on everyone's skin. Yes, you're right about that. Some people might love the way the eau de parfums of the Les Exclusives smell. I'm not saying they're going to smell bad to every nose. However, to somebody who has been smelling Les Exclusives for like, uh, you know, 10 years now, I, I have to say that for me, uh, personally, um, it's the Eau de Toilettes. And the Eau de Parfums are just not cutting it at all. So, 
Anyway, uh, Ferb Barragan. Barragan. How are you doing, sweetie? Herb, Ferb. Ferb Barragan. How are you doing? Um, on my Chanel Sycamore secret ingredient video, I should make a meme of Joan Crawford saying, No eau de parfums ever! <laughs> From her scene in Mummy Dearest. LOL. Oh, I need the shoulder pads. I need like... I got them all like naked here. I need the shoulder pads like up to there. I need the really like the dark hair and I need like even more makeup. And then we got to say, what's the sentence? No eau de parfums ever. You got to open those eyes and be crazy. No eau de parfums ever. And actually, that would be Faye Dunaway, of course, acting as Joan Crawford. Um, nom, 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 nom. Mark Harris, how you doing, sweetie? Also on Chanel's Exclusives Eau de Toilette or Eau de Parfum. I sure hope that someone from Chanel sees this video. I'm not so sure I would want that. I'll tell you why. I was able to sample Coromandel Eau de Toilette and Eau de Parfum last night uh, side by side. And while it was somewhat hard for me to notice the major differences, I did notice subtle differences. And I preferred the Eau de Toilette. Now, whether or not your opinions influenced me, I don't know. But I do know that I will not be purchasing Eau de Parfum. Chanel, are you listening? Even if the Eau de Parfum was just as good, I'm pissed that Chanel no longer gives us the choice of which version we want. So I'm sticking with you, Jacob, and will not purchase any more from Chanel unless they listen to their customers and give us what we want. I hope that lots of others will follow suit. P.S. I just left a fairly long feedback on the Chanel website. I even mentioned your name. I doubt it will do any good, but here's hoping. Uh, yeah, leaving my name might do uh, bad, actually, because <laughs> I don't know. I'm not so sure. You know my love for the brand. And you know my love for the heritage of this brand. And you know my love for Coco. But, you know, some people that are heads of something, they might be seeing what I do as offensive to them they might you know even try to shut me down because i'm just not promoting uh without any critique you know a brand for free on top of that because of course i'm not paid to do so i just do it for the love of it so i could imagine if 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 their feathers get ruffled too much you know they might try to shut me down or not Hopefully, they have an open heart and they see if they do see the videos and they kind of like start thinking, oh, maybe, maybe there's some, maybe all of these viewers and all of our customers that actually love the brand are on to something. And maybe we should, for a change, start to listen to them. You know, um, the, the Chanel sunglasses, for example, uh, since I think. Uh, since last year already, they began like not even producing the plastic authenticity cards anymore for the sunglasses to save money. <laughs> you don't get those anymore. If you purchase a pair of sunglasses, you're just going to get the bill. You're not going to get the little authenticity card that they have to fill out in the boutique. Gone are those days. Uh, another one of my um, subscribers, actually, B. Rachel, how you doing, sweetie? Uh, B. Um, just wrote me that, uh, you know, they don't give out like the little felt things to, to kind of close the wallet on chains, like to protect the, the flap, because allegedly a lot of essays have been giving it out to, to the customers and not, they're not supposed to. So Chanel isn't like allegedly even sending these felt things out anymore with the wallets on chain. Like if this is the case, that's like really nasty shit there. Like you can't save money on stuff like that as a luxury brand. You can't, you just cannot. So there's a lot of you know, nasty stuff that's been going on. And I've been, I'm, I'm receiving, all of y'all are sending me a lot of information. I get, I have my spies infiltrated everywhere. So no matter how hard somebody tries to shut me down, it's it going to be impossible. I am rooted everywhere. And my tentacles arrive everywhere. And I see, I hear, and I speak only truth. So... If somebody becomes potentially, you know, a threat to somebody else, they're going to try to shut you down, obviously. So if that's the case, you know we're on to something here. If it's not the case, then it's either we're not on to something or we're on to something, but we're not that important to them because the numbers aren't as high, meaning we don't have 
30 million views per video. You know what I mean? Because as I said, in this business, money talks. And that's the only thing that talks and that's the only thing big companies really listen to. It's the ka -ching. That's the music. That's the sound. So that's why I said, if I stop purchasing Dieu de Parfums, then they're going to start listening. But as long as people are purchasing them, they're going to be like, oh, it's all fine. Hooray, we upped the price $100 and people are still buying them. Ha <laughs> ha. You know what I mean? Duh. So that's that. All right, guys, this was Channel Talk. I hope you liked this video. If you have, please thumb it up. Let me know what you think in this comment section down below. And uh, don't forget to subscribe to my channel here on YouTube. So I'm also on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. So no matter how, come, uh, how hard they come at you, we fight back with love because we never give up on love. Love you guys. See you soon. Take care. Bye.